Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another hotel room here on The Angry Astronaut. I am hours away from departing to cover the Rocket Lab launch that will be taking off, hopefully, here uh, from Wallops Island in Virginia. Again, the first ever launch of Rocket Lab from any nation other than New Zealand. Very, very important mission for them, but that's really not what's getting the headlines right now, obviously. Obviously, it is instead SpaceX and the wet dress rehearsal that took place at Boca Chica. It was all incredibly impressive. The imagery just blew my mind. But unfortunately, we seem to be lacking a little bit in details. And I'm going to explain to you why this wet dress rehearsal appears to be a little different from the one that took place with SLS prior to the first launch for Artemis. Now, before I get going, I'd like to offer my deepest thanks to Mars Embassy for providing me with this unique and seldom seen footage of the entire process. This is a time-lapse series of photographs that were taken of the entire wet dress rehearsal process, and it was an amazing thing to see. I wish to hell I could have been there in person. That having been said, a lot of huge things were accomplished, and I can't take anything away from that, even though my history has of course been to be a little skeptical about any sort of milestones that Starship has passed, simply because we have heard many positive things before without any real results for about a year and a half now. All of that having been said though, Starship is clearly getting very close to the historic moment when it finally lifts off and makes its way to orbit, even though that may not happen the first time successfully, but still, regardless of what happens, it's going to be historic. And something very unique was accomplished yesterday, 4,600 tons worth of oxidizer and liquid methane loaded onto Starship. That is the first time in human history that that much propellant and oxidizer has been loaded onto any rocket, even the mighty N1 pales by comparison. Of course, it also gives you an impression of what could happen if this thing were to blow up on the pad, but let's not think about that right now. Let's instead think of what this ship is going to be capable of that no other rocket could possibly accomplish. A hundred metric tons into low Earth orbit. Nothing comes anywhere close to that. And also, at least in theory, complete reusability now very close on the horizon assuming that everything went well with this test. And as I said before, SpaceX was very cryptic about the information that we got. Let me tell you everything that we received from SpaceX, and it was a total of three sentences. Quote, Starship completed its full flight-like wet dress rehearsal at Starbase today. This was the first time an integrated ship and booster were fully loaded with more than 10 million pounds of propellant. Today's test will help verify a full launch countdown sequence, as well as the performance of Starship in the orbital pad for flight-like operations. That's it. End of story. Full stop. Now, what did SLS do during its wet dress rehearsal? Aside from leak, that is. Well, this infographic may be a little difficult for some of you to see, so I'll go through it with you. Number one, SLS and Orion were rolled out on the mobile launcher from the vehicle assembly building. Obviously, the same thing was done here. Number two, the crew mates power and other connections between the rocket, spacecraft, mobile launcher, and the launch pad. One would assume that all of this happened given how everything proceeded yesterday. Number three, SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft are powered Powered on. One would assume that this happened yesterday as well with Starship. Launch team counts down to T minus 33 seconds after a series of pre planned holds. Did they go through this entire process and did it go smoothly? We really don't know. Number six, clock is recycled to T minus 10 minutes to demonstrate procedures for scrubbing launch for weather or technical issues. Once again, was this done? We don't know. At T minus 9.34 seconds to launch, the countdown is ended simulating scrubbing the launch of SLS. 
Also, we really don't know if this happened. And then finally, propellants are drained from the SLS to ground tanks, ending the wet dress rehearsal. This, of course, did happen. And you're going to see that happening here in just a second. My God, this is unbelievable. Uh, keep in mind, once again, this rocket is the height of a 30-story building. It's actually a bit taller than that. It's insane. As a matter of fact, I want to have another look at it. And by the way, my friend at Mars Embassy, he took tons and tons of photos of this wet dress rehearsal in process. Head over to his channel and subscribe, please. His content is getting better all the time. So, yes, an absolutely enormous step forward was taken. But what's going to happen next? Well, during the bulletin that I released yesterday, I recommended that the NASA Office Inspector General actually conduct an investigation as to where Starship is currently, because as we can see today, SpaceX is extremely opaque about these things. We really don't have any details on how this wet dress rehearsal went. Far fewer details than we got from NASA during their testing of SLS. And Starship is at least as important to the future of Artemis and to the future of our ambitions to explore the solar system as SLS is. Really, I would say that it's a lot more important because SLS is a project doomed to cancellation sometime in the near future. It's just too wasteful and too expensive. This is the future of our exploration of the solar system, and I think we need to know more about how it's progressing, especially given the fact that about $5 billion worth of taxpayer money has now been invested in it. So what's coming next? Well, I would say the next 24 to 48 hours will tell. If they begin to unstack Starship and prepare for a 33-engine static fire on the booster, then we know that the wet dress rehearsal went flawlessly, or at least as close to flawlessly as possible, in order to facilitate a future launch, and we can move forward to a full-fledged static fire. If they don't unstack it and begin this process, all over again, it indicates that there may have been some issues during the wet dress rehearsal. But as I said before, we really don't know. And I have to admit, that gets a little frustrating, if for no other reason, because we're all so damned excited about this thing. We all want it to succeed, and a little bit more information I don't think would hurt anybody. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, please stay tuned to this channel for more details and also check the description for various ways to support my content including today's historic rocket lab mission from Wallops Island, Virginia. And as always, stay angry about space!